what is time? St. Augustine, 1600 years ago, asked this question, and then he proceeded to answer it himself. When I am not asked, I know what time is, but when I try to explain it, I don't know what it is. We all are experiencing time right now. We pass through time. Time flows at one second every second. Space is very different. We have control over space. But we can't find time the way we move through space. Right now, you can get up and leave this room if you want to. I hope you won't, but <laughs> you can. And we would like to see if we could move through. It's a question that is valid. And we will get to that question about, can we actually move through time in a short while? We are always somewhere at some when. And this is represented in something called a space-time diagram. A movement purely in time is a vertical line, and a movement purely in space is a horizontal line. Now, ordinarily, all of us move through space and time like a trip to the grocery store. And um, we, uh, we, we, we represent something called our world line, which is the trace of our life on this space-time diagram. When I married my wife, I intertwined my world line with hers. If on this diagram we want to show light, then it is a straight line that goes off the figure. If I want to put light on this diagram, then I have to rescale the horizontal axis. And it's easy to scale by measuring distance in terms of the distance that light We measure light in terms of the, the distance light travels in a second, say a light second. Light moves at the tremendous speed of 186,000 miles per second. If I were to translate that into how many times it could go around the Earth, that would be seven and a half times around the Earth if it could curve around. So at that tremendous speed, if I rescale this diagram and I plot distance in light years and time in terms of years, then light is represented by a degree diagonal on the ground. And now our world line shrinks to just a vertical line along the time axis. Let me come back to that question now. Before, before, before we come to that question, I want to uh, point out that we are all travelers in space. And um, the record for space travel is held by the 24 astronauts who went to the moon. Okay? They traveled 250,000 miles to the moon. They traveled 250,000 miles back. That's a total of about half a million miles or 800,000 kilometers. The moon is one and one third light seconds away, a different way of measuring distance. So these astronauts, in the 80 years they lived, traveled one and one third, mile, uh, one third, and one, one and one third light seconds to the moon, one and one third light seconds back, two and two thirds light seconds. Give them another one third of a light second. They made several trips around the Earth attending all those ticker tape parades. <laughs> and so these astronauts, these people, these 24 people who hold the record for travel for all of humanity, held a full three light seconds in space in their 80 years of life. 80 years is about two and a half billion, two and a half billion seconds. So while they traveled two and a half billion seconds in time, they traveled three light seconds in space. So we are all space travelers. Now, OK, so we are space travelers. Let me get back to that question. Could we travel 
through time. You've all seen science fiction movies where a group of astronauts go off into some faraway place, come back, and only a few years have passed for them, and a long time has passed for Earth. Is this even possible? Can we actually do this? Einstein said, yes, we can. What led him to say this were two amazing insights. His first insight was we were just floating in space with nothing else. Then the notion of space or time would be completely absent. It's because there are markers that we can measure distance. It's because event follows another event that we have in data that time passes. One meter apart. Those two claps were two seconds apart. We need some markers, we need events, and we need to measure them. His second insight was that that standard of measure would be the speed of light, a universal measure that everyone can accept that always gives you the same result, 186,000 miles a second. But he, what he was saying was even deeper than that. The speed of light is an invariable. That is, it is measured the same by every observer, no matter what he's doing. What Einstein said is, if I am running at 185,000 miles a second, measure a beam of light, I will measure 186,000 miles a second for that speed. If you measure that same beam of light, you will also come up with 186,000 miles per second. This seems strange, but it's due to a deep symmetry law in nature, which is beyond the scope of this talk, but it has been verified by experiment again and again. Let me say that again. If a beam of light is going past you and I'm running at 185,000 miles a second, I will still measure its speed as the speed of light, 186,000 miles, not 186,000 miles minus 185. Michelson and Morley were two scientists who tried to measure the speed of the Earth whizzing through space by measuring a beam of light that was going in the direction that the Earth is moving through space. And they again and again came up with 186,000 miles. Now, the consequence of this strange phenomena is that time is relative. Let me show you how. We are going to look at events in Einstein's train. What is Einstein's train? It's a train that's 186 miles or 300,000 kilometers long. It's made of glass, so we can look inside. And Ms. Red rides on the train, and Mr. Purple is standing by the tracks. And we're going to see events from two different perspectives, Ms. Red's and Mr. Purple's. So the train travels at a pretty high speed. Remember, it's 186,000 miles long. And that is what Mr. Purple sees. Miss Red would see the following. So this is Miss Red's perspective. The rest of the world is going, going by. Let me just go back there. OK. I, two event, there, there are two, uh, let, let me back up for a bit. I, this clicker is doing the other. We're going to see two events that happen in this train a flash of light is going to happen at the back of the train, a firecracker explodes, 
and the light is going to hit the front of the train, okay? So boom, firecracker goes off, firecracker hits front of the train. Boom. It's flat. So that again, boom. It's flat. How long does it take between boom and splat? One second. The train is 186,000 miles long. We're going to see the same event from Mr. Purple's perspective. Boom. Splat. Boom. From Mr. Purple's perspective, the same two events flash at the back of the train, light hits front of the train, take three seconds because the light travels longer. And the speed of light is the same for both Miss Red and Mr. Purple. Now, I'm going to show you the same events with the background taken out so it doesn't distract. Okay, half of the room, you're gonna say boom when the flash happens and splat when the light hits the front. Okay, this half of the room, you're gonna say and then splat. What is it? Does it take one second between event one and event two? Or two seconds? Fortunately, the louder voice win in science. <laughs> in this case, both are correct. One second passes for Ms. Red, three seconds pass for Mr. Purple. I don't know about you, but I tell my time with my watch. <laughs> and so, to get a deeper insight into what's happening, Ms. Red and Mr. Purple decide to get clocks. Not any old clock, they call an Einstein clock. Einstein train, Einstein clock. What is an Einstein clock? It's the simplest clock there is. There's one moving part, and it's very easy to understand mirrors 186,000 miles apart and a beam of flash of light moves between the two mirrors. There you go. Tick, tock, tick, tock, ticking off the seconds. They apply to the National Science Foundation, get two Einstein clocks to do their experiment and they synchronize their clocks. And they take them to the field. And now we're gonna see what really happened. When Miss Red travels with her clock. Okay, you, were, you guys were Miss Red, right? Miss Red team. You tick talk off the seconds, and you guys tick tock off the seconds for Mr. Blue. So, tick, tick. So when two tick tock, when it's tick tock for Miss Red, it's tick tock, tick tock for Mr. Purple, and you can see why. If light has a constant speed, then time is relative. Now, red could come back. Miss Red comes back. No. It's tick tock, tick tock. Four seconds for Miss Red. And how many for Mr. Purple? Twelve seconds. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Tick tock, tick tock. If Miss Red were to go on a long trip, four-year trip, 
12 years would have passed for Mr. Purple. So time travel is possible. It's because the speed of light is a universal constant measured the same by everyone. If the speed of light is a constant, time has to be relative. This was Einstein's great discovery. Now, progress happens when a new idea, something that may be contrary to our very notion and common sense, but is supported by evidence, is accepted by society at large. One such thing happened 500 years ago when Copernicus said, the Earth is not at the center of the universe, but the Earth revolves around the sun. It was a radical idea. And it took 110 years for people to accept that idea. Today, it's 110 years since Einstein came up with relativity in 1905 at the young age of 25. And I've just shown you why time has to be relative. It is time that we adopted this new paradigm. But to, adop to adopt a new paradigm, for society to really understand a new idea, you have to understand and think about it yourself. I hope that this will inspire you to go and ponder more about what relativity is and to try to draw those figures and really see whether that, does that really, did I understand that? And to help you ponder that, I'm actually going to leave you with a puzzle. Everything I said is true. This is what happens. But as I mentioned, everything is relative. Motion is relative. We saw Mr. Purple's perspective. What about Miss Red? Miss Red looks at the world and sees that Mr. Purple travels. Let me do that again. This is what Miss Red sees. And Mr. Purple, when Miss Red comes back, she, actually Miss Red doesn't come back, Mr. Purple comes back. And for Miss Red, Mr. Purple is younger. This is called the twin paradox. And I leave you with that. Thank you.